Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to go through all the books that I've read in November this month um, because we're almost December and it is time for a wrap up. The first book I've read is um, a Dutch book. It is from a friend of mine that got published and it is actually a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Um, I am not going to say much about this because it is in Dutch and it isn't available in English. The next book is probably, no, not probably, it is the weirdest book that I've ever read. It is The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I picked this one because I'm trying to read books around the world and I was looking for a German author and I picked Franz Kafka because he was one of the more popular choices. And his book, The Metamorphosis, is, I think, his most famous work. My god, what a strange book this was. It's not that I didn't enjoy it, um, it's just, it was so weird. Um, I haven't read anything like that before. It is about a young man and he wakes up from a very strange dream. And he realizes once he's awake that he has turned into a giant insect. The premise sounds very weird and I promise you the book delivers. It is so weird. So his family uh, sees him for the first time as a giant insect and they all freak out, obviously. Um, and his sister is the one who takes best care of him. I really don't have much thoughts about the book because it was just one word it was just bizarre that's all I have to say and uh, I'm kind of happy that I read it because it's you know I've read the German author and I got to know his writing style so that's all good but I am not tempted to pick up anything by Kafka the next book I've read is Lord of the Flies by William Golding and it is also a novel that I don't uh, have a copy of so I will link it here. Um, Lord of the Flies is about a group of children who end up on a deserted island and they're trying to survive. I didn't know anything about the novel itself. I didn't even know where the story was about before I started reading it. But I saw so many people talk about the novel and uh, having very positive things to say about it. So I wanted to give it a go. Um, the first third of the book was very hard for me and I was, I kind of was ready to give up on it. But something changed and it got better and better, so I kept reading until the end. The author himself wanted to write a realistic story uh, about how children would actually behave in a realistic way when they strand on a deserted island because the author had read many books like these. He always felt like th these kids weren't behaving in a realistic way. So he wanted to write a story himself. I kind of feel neutral about the story because I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was just a story in the middle and it is not that I'm gonna reread the story one day because I didn't love it enough but it was just you know entertaining I didn't I didn't hate it I didn't love it it was just okay because the protagonists are all children it feels sometimes it feels kind of young um, and I think it fits into the section of children's literature, but I am not sure. The next book I've read was A Secret History by Donna Tartt. And since I've already done a review of this book, I will not go into depth about this novel. Um, I will link it down below and you can check it out if you're interested. And then the other one, If We Were Villains, is also one that I finished this month. And I've done a review of this one too, together with The Secret History. So if you're interested, I will just link the review down below and you can check them out. Um, to be very brief, The Secret History wasn't really my cup of tea. It was very slow um, and I didn't really understand the hype within the dark academia culture. And then this one is also a dark academia read. This novel is centered around Shakespeare, so very interesting if you are interested in his works and you should definitely, definitely check it out if you are a Shakespeare lover. Um, it is also about a group of students, a murder, same 
same goes for this one and um, I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed the secret history so yeah check it out if you're interested in uh, my review the next book that I've read and I also do not own a copy is The Curious Case of Benjamin Button I didn't even know that a book of this story existed because I've, I saw the movie like years and years ago and I absolutely loved it. I think I was around 14 years old and I absolutely adored that movie. And then recently I discovered that there was a book of the novel and so I decided to give it a go and I was very surprised to see that the novel is really really short so it's a, it's a short story you can like read it in a couple of hours the reason why I was so surprised is because the movie is very long and so much is happening in the movie and I was so surprised to see that the novel was so short it is actually about a baby who gets born and he is born old and he as he grows up he gets younger instead of older and so it gives him all kinds of troubles and um, I think this is a very very interesting concept very original I liked reading it but it was too short to like really get into the story and really get to know the characters it was just there was not enough time there was not enough depth and I think that's the main reason why I'm not really a fan of short stories because there is just so little time to get to know the characters and I just like to have a little bit more you know volume to a novel and I am glad that I've read it and to see where the movie found its origin. I'm actually really excited to rewatch the movie because I really like it. The next novel I finished was Anne of Green Gables. I also did a video about Anne of Green Gables um, in I think my current read videos and I was talking about this story and it is in French and I wanted to finish it this year and it all worked out. This story is a children's story and it's about a young girl, an orphan, and she gets adopted by a brother and sister and this is actually a story about how she is getting used to her new life and she's making friends she's going to school and everything and this was just i picked it in french i would highly recommend reading it in english because it's the original language i just picked french because i want to improve my language um, but i would recommend reading this in english and it is just the prose is very beautiful, it is written in such um, an interesting and engaging way. Um, it is so full of the love of nature. I'd highly recommend picking this one up if you enjoy reading children's classics. The next book that I finished this month was To Kill a Mockingbird. I actually picked this book up because it was so... You know, I saw it everywhere, it's such a popular book and I actually didn't think I would enjoy this novel because I didn't like... I didn't really like the synopsis, I don't know, it, it just didn't spark an interest but I still wanted to give it a go and when I started reading this I was surprised because I was really really liking it and I think it's mainly because of the writing style, it was just like it's hard to explain but not much is happening in this book this is actually a very boring book but the writing style made me want to like go on and read on and i couldn't stop and i always read multiple books at the same time and i noticed that even though i was reading other books as well i was still picking this one first um, and i finished this one first because it's it was there was something intriguing about this novel i think chances are that i will reread this one one day but i'm not sure yet i think it depends on how much the story will pop up in my mind again over uh, the coming months this story is about a family of two kids and a father and the father is actually defending a black man accused of raping a, a white woman and so um, the novel is actually about the life of the kids um, because we see 
the world and we see the story through their eyes. The kids are 8 years old and 13 years old, I think, which makes you think that it might read as a children's classic, but it doesn't at all. It's just, it's so grown up and it doesn't read like a children's classic at all. I loved Atticus, the uh, father of the children and the lawyer of Tom. Um, I loved him so, so much. He was my favorite character, uh, mainly because he is such an amazing and good man. And he teaches his children um, the values of life and he says such beautiful things to them. He has the best dialogue. There are some quotes that I really loved and I want to share them with you. There are just some kind of men who are so busy worrying about the next world. They've never learned to live in this one and you can look down the street and see the results. The next quote I really liked was, people in their right minds never take pride in their talents. Really, really love that one. Oh, now that I look back uh, on the book, I, I was really confused by the gender of one of the main characters, the kid Scout, who is also called Louise, uh, uh, Jean Louise, and I was constantly confused about whether or not she was a girl or a boy, but it turned out she's a girl. So it might be good to know for you if you're uh, if you're going to pick up this book that Scout or Jean Louise is actually a girl. I'm just saying this because it took me so much time to figure it out, mainly because because of the dialogue and such, because they they said things like oh come on be a gentleman, and I was constantly confused like what be a gentleman? She's a girl, like I was confused all the time. Anyway, the next quote I really enjoyed. Atticus had said it was a polite thing to talk to people about what they were interested in, not about what you were interested in. So those were the quotes I marked. Um, I would definitely recommend this book because I really enjoyed it. I might reread it one day, but I'm not sure. I, we will see. My cat Toulouse is here with us today. He's right here and he is watching me because he's hungry. I didn't know I was gonna finish it this month, but I did. And it is Joan of Arc. Well, the book is called Joan and this is a Dutch copy. And I was looking so, so forward to this one. Like, oh, I am so happy that I finally read it. And I finished it a couple of hours ago. So I don't know if I feel ready to talk about it yet because I kind of, it needs to sink in, but I, I do have some thoughts about it. So this is a historical fiction about Joan of Arc and we follow her along as she leads her life. Now we all know that the novel ends in a very tragic way and most people very vaguely know about the life of Joan of Arc and I I love French history so so much so I was, I was very looking forward to do this book now I wanna first I want to talk about this edition so I don't really like the very colorful uh, cover art on the dust check but I do love like the inside of the book with the fleur-de-lis it is so beautiful. Now the first third of the book we follow Joan who is very young, she is still a child and we follow her life as she gets beaten up by her father, she isn't loved, we meet her family, we meet her sister who she loves dearly. I enjoyed the first third of this book so much, it was amazing reading about her childhood. I. I don't know anything about Joan of Arc, I haven't done any research, so I don't know the the truth, you know, um, the, the true history about Joan, but it was done so, so well. It was so interesting to read about her life as a child, and I was looking so much forward to the point where she would come of age, and suddenly she's 17, and I thought, yay, it's gonna, it's gonna be so exciting. And this is where the story became less interesting to me. From the moment she turned 17, I felt like 
nothing was happening and I was constantly waiting for things to happen and they didn't come and I was so so excited to like you know see battle scenes we do get a lot of information about France and about the time period which I really loved and you can see how much the author really was interested in what she was writing and the love she felt for Joanne so that is really really great to see it's just that I needed a little bit more action and again I don't know anything about the true history of Joan of Arc but to me not knowing anything about the history it felt like it needed more fiction to make it more interesting because to me it felt like the author was following her true life and she didn't add much to make it more interesting like the fighting scenes could have been more fleshed out I think and more interesting and the relationships like Joan is talking about my friends, my friends, but we don't really feel friendship and there isn't much friendship building going on now that I think about it, there isn't much dialogue. I think the book mainly contains Joanne um, thinking stuff to herself, like inner dialogue and information about France, information about the king, and there isn't much dialogue, which also made it very hard for me to care about the side characters. And it was it was a little bit too much focused for me. Um, it was a bit too much focused on Joanne and the side characters seemed a little forgotten, like there was too little interaction, too little events going on. And it really breaks my heart saying this because I was, I was so so excited about this book and maybe that's the reason why I'm a little bit disappointed in this book is because I had such high expectations and I love the history of France so I was I was hoping for something extraordinary and it was okay I would I would still recommend this book but it wasn't as epic as I thought it would be I did love the writing style it was very good and as for rereading, I don't think I will ever reread this book. I wasn't feeling the emotions and I thought I would feel so much while reading this book because we all know how the story ends. So there we go, those were the books I've read this November. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.